Pew, 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 pew. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Saturday Weapon Ray. Today, we have a pretty sweet little gun here. This is the Palmetto State Armory AKV 9mm. So, this is, I guess, kind of um, modeled after the Russian, um, what is it, Vitez. And, dude, this thing is pretty awesome. Um, very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, different in some, but I think the way that it's different in some is actually a little bit more superior uh, to the Russian model, but we'll get into that. So I think I'm going to go over all the things that this gun has to offer uh, and then talk about the pros, the cons, and then how I have it set up. Okay, so before we even get started, the gun is unloaded here. Nothing there. Nothing there. All right. Okay, so uh, this gun came out several years ago um, from Palmetto State Armory. The first batch they had some issues with. Uh, then they kind of did a revamp, and this uh, this new version is seems to be doing much better. And I am not aware of any other ma any major recalls uh, with this weapon. So this version, there are a few different versions. This is the AKV MOE. ALG version with the triangle brace here. I went with that uh, just because I really like the handguard, which we'll talk about. It comes with the ALG trigger, which I think really sets this gun apart from most guns. And then I really like the kind of traditional uh, triangle uh, stock or bra brace on this one. Um, but okay, let's get into it. So um, right off the bat, the machining is really well done. Uh, there is a forged trunnion and forged bolt carrier, which is pretty awesome. Uh, really heavy-duty stuff, really nice machining and really nice finishing. Um, everything's kind of black nitride. The barrel, it's a 10.5-inch um, black nitride barrel. I think it's a 4150 aluminum, uh, which is, you know, really good. It's going to be really durable. Up front here, they just have their, they have their own proprietary muzzle brake here. Um, I think it helps a little bit. You're not going to have a ton of recoil with a 9mm, although this 9mm does have a decent amount of recoil just because of the direct blowback, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like it. Um, you know, some people might have wanted a flash hider or something, but I think this is fine. Um, they do have, so what's kind of cool is with most AKs, there is this detent uh, retention pin here. So you can easily screw this off. This is one half by 28. So most things can, uh, you know, will be able to fit right on this. This is going to be compliant with a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, and so a lot of times I'll just run a Silencer Co. Osprey 9 and I can just screw that right on. And uh, yeah, so, you know, if you don't like this, I mean, then you can essentially just treat this as a thread protector. Um, but it is really nice. I like the fact that there's just a, a retention pin and you don't need really any tools or anything like that to, uh, you know, to keep this in place. I don't know if I got that all the way. There we go. Um, and uh, so I do really like that. It's definitely convenient uh, if you want to swap something out. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving back, you have decent iron sights. You've got a fixed iron sight, uh, rear iron sight here and then a, an adjustable front. And uh, I had to adjust it a little bit. This, I was shooting a little bit high. I had to adjust it pretty easy. Um, I do have an optic back here, which we'll talk about just because, you know, there's only about maybe seven, eight inches between the rear and the front sight. Um, so, you know, if you're shooting out further distances, this smaller window can, uh, uh, you know, sight picture can make a difference. Um, but I, I do really like them. Um, you know, they're, they're made out of, you know, aluminum and they're, they're very durable. Moving back, I'm going to switch to this side here. You do have uh, their own um, M-Lock handguard here. And uh, again, it's made out of uh, enhanced aluminum. It's really good. Um, 
might be a little bit bulky, but again, I'm going to get into pros and cons later. Um, but again, it's, uh, you know, kind of this black nitride finish M lock. So you've got rail space here, here, you've got rail space underneath, and then two other slots on the other side mirroring, you know, the, uh, the left side of the gun there. Uh, okay. So let's get into, um, bulk carry group and gas system. So it is direct blowback. So this thing is very reliable and this thing will chug through anything. Uh, I haven't done too much stress test on this gun, uh, but other people have. So if you head over to AK Operators Union, that guy threw it into a swamp for 60 hours, six zero hours, and he took it out and he had no malfunctions. I mean, well, there was one, but he believes that it was the round itself. It wasn't the gun. Um, and he was able to shoot 35 rounds, no problem. And, th and that gun was in there for 60 hours. Um, and th this thing just chugs. So it's, it's freaking awesome. Uh, I think military arms channel also did something with the water, the mud, the sand, the dirt, and this thing chugged through. I mean, d that direct blowback and this bolt carrier, I mean, you could put really anything in there and that's going to chew through that. So that's really good. That's, I really like that. I'll probably really have never have to worry about anything clogging up or jamming up the bolt carrier group. And this, this gun is going to be very reliable, but it's an AK. So, you know, that's kind of what they're known for. Uh, moving back, you do have a Picatinny um, uh, dust cover here. So this is a hinge dust cover. So the button is right back here. And you just push that in and this dust cover comes up and you can get to whatever you need to uh, with that. And then it just clips back into place. Uh, that's really nice. Uh, I don't know how many slots here. I'm, just by looking, you might have about 12 slots. So not a ton of space, but enough what you need to do. And then you've got a little bit of uh, pick rail up here. This might only be about five or six slots up here. But again, enough for what I'm looking for. Moving back, um, the this is just a Magpul uh, pistol grip here. I like it. It's a pretty standard uh, Magpul grip. It's it's uh, uh, beveled out a little bit here uh, for a little bit more contour, a little bit more ergonomic fit with the hands. You have some texturing on the sides here and on the front and the back. Uh, okay, let's talk about the trigger. It's an ALG trigger uh, with a lightning bow. This thing is super smooth. I think I'm going to wait, though, until the pros and cons list to talk about that because this thing is just awesome. And finally, moving back, you have a Picatinny adapter for your brace. Um, and I think that's really cool. You can simply loosen this bolt here or nut, and you can raise this up or down depending on how high or how low you want your cheek weld to be and depending on what kind of optic you're running. I have an EOTech, this is sitting up a little bit higher. So I actually haven't touched this from the factory. I think this is pretty good. If anything, I might be able to bring it up one slot, uh, but I think it's pretty good. But if you were running a, a another red dot with a low mount, you might keep it here or maybe even drop it down a little bit, but it's super easy to adjust. Uh, which is nice. The top here is made out of a polymer, super, super durable. And then down here, uh, it's a little flimsy. You can see there's some, there's some flex and there's some play in that, but it's a brace. So technically it has to, you know, fit around your arm when you're shooting like anybody does that. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Again, I really like the triangle. Uh, I think that's really good. Uh, okay. I think, oh, so you do have a um, flared magwell, so it makes reloads really easy. And uh, you have a paddle mag release, which is nice. I, I really actually like uh, paddle mag releases. I have paddle mags on uh, releases on a few of my guns, and I really like them. They're ambi and they're, and they're super nice and intuitive. On the other side, so there's actually once the you run the mag dry, unlike most AKs, uh, the bolt carrier actually uh, is held back, right? So there's actually a bolt catch which holds the, the bolt back, which is nice. And on the other side, so you can either charge this, you know, you can either charge it uh, manually or on the other side, they have kind of this AR style mag release here. Um, and uh, they've got kind of this, this etching into it. It's kind of like a, kind of like a step um, etch into it. And you can, uh, you know, it's very easy to actuate and you can actuate the, uh, the bolt that way too. So you can release the bolt 
just like that. And I usually do that. Sometimes I go up and over, um, but this is definitely much quicker. And I really like that they added that. Uh, I think a lot of thought went into that. And, and that is definitely something that I like over the Russian made Vitiaz. Uh, okay, I think that is about it just for the specs. Uh, now, oh, one last thing. Uh, so when this is fully, uh, when, when the brace is fully extended, the overall length is, I think, 27 inches. And then when it's collapsed, it is 19 inches. So I'll actually collapse it here for you. Uh, if I can here. There we go. So it's left side folding. All right, and it sits nicely. I don't know if it's on a spring or if it's mag mag magnetized, but you can see if I just let it go, it's, it hugs right into the gun, which is really nice. And it's really, I mean, it, it, I mean, this is a very short package, 19 inches. You could easily fit this into a backpack um, or something like that. So that is actually super cool, and I like that. And then locks into place. Okay. So let's talk about pros and cons. Let's go into the cons first. I wanna end on a high note. Um, let's start from the front and then work our way back. So the cons uh, I do have with this is the, and I don't even hate it that much. There's nothing on this gun that I really hate, um, but the, uh, I can't think of what I'm saying. The handguard here is a little chunky maybe to some people. Um, I usually do a C clamp. I don't have very big hands and my hands fit just fine. I'm able to actuate this pressure pad up here. So it's not too bad, but with some of the stuff that you do see from Zenit Co coming out, there are a little bit more streamlined hand guards for the AK. Now this does accept normal AK furniture. So you're not gonna have to go through PSA directly to get their own furniture. You can, you can get other AK furniture and it will fit this just fine. I haven't swapped it out yet. It is a little chunky, but it's not enough for me to spend $100, $200 on a new handguard. I actually really like some of the cuts and the way that this looks um, it, you know, over Zenitco, but this is a little bit thicker. So just, just to let you know, Zenitco could be an option if you're looking to slim up this gun. Oh, uh, what else? Moving back. Uh, oh, really the only other thing that was a big problem was when I first got this gun, the button to release this and to fold this in was almost impossible to depress. I mean, I'm talking like I was bruising my thumb trying to push this button up to um, collapse that brace. And you might be saying, oh, it sounds like you need some Vagisil. Yeah, I might need some Vagisil. Uh, but it was super, super, super stiff at first. I broke it in and now I can get it every time. Um, sometimes it, it might be a little stiff, but uh, I mean, I, I can get it every time, really no problem. But the first several times, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was just this gun, if it was me, or if this is a known problem before it has to be broken in. But the first several times I really, really struggled to get that brace collapsed. Uh, other than that, that's really about it. This gun is pretty sweet. I really like the angle. I don't have a problem with the, the angle of the, the pistol here, so that's good. Um, the selector switch, I actually like. It's not as quick as an AR, but you do have this um, enhanced selector switch, so you can easily you know flick it down with your, with your trigger finger. Uh, okay, so let's get into po pros now. So this gun is really accurate for a nine millimeter. Um, at a hundred yards, I was getting about a four or five MOA, which is about what is expected for a nine millimeter at about a hundred yards. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I don't have a problem with the accuracy at all. Uh, what else do I like? Uh, I like that it's M-Lock. Right, I mean, so M-Lock, there's a ton of aftermarket support for M-Lock, so I really like that they went with the M-Lock here um, on their handguard. Uh, moving back, I think the gun is gassed um, really nicely. Um, even when it's suppressed, I'm not getting any blowback, or at least not, not enough for me to really notice, so that's really good. And with it being a direct blowback, uh, this thing will just chew through anything. Uh, okay, so let's talk about, let's move back, let's talk about the trigger. This is an ALG trigger. This trigger is 
probably the nicest trigger that I have on any one of my guns. Uh, currently, um, there's going to be a gun, hopefully in the next six to eight months, depending on when the ATF gets back to me. That's going to be another really good trigger. But this trigger, I would say the pull is at most three pounds, probably less. Um, and it's super easy to bump fire. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Um, so here, we're just gonna, we're gonna ghost this trigger right now. So come up here. So you've got, oh God, it's so light. <laughs> I didn't even mean to pull the trigger. Um, okay, so, so you've got about a millimeter. And then it just lets go. I mean, I'm not even meaning to, uh, here, let me just take this out. I'm not even meaning to pull this trigger. It's just so light. And uh, so it, there's the wall essentially. And then it breaks. And then the reset is that. So really audible, really tactile. And then you're good to go again. Um, again, this thing is super easy to bump fire. Um, the only thing though that I've noticed is because the trigger is so light, there have been a couple times where I've shot twice really quickly, uh, and didn't mean to, uh, again, it was in a controlled environment. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't destroy anything. There's no collateral damage. Uh, but that is something to maybe take into consideration. This trigger is so freaking good and so freaking light that you might have accidental discharges. <laughs> um, so just make sure that if this gun is off safe, the gun is always pointed in a safe direction just because that trigger is so light. But it is freaking awesome. Okay. Um, what else? Um, the brace, again, I like I like the brace. It's pretty comfortable uh, for, for a brace. Um, I haven't really found it flexing too much on me when I'm shooting. Um, you know, sometimes there's some braces that collapse uh, in some of the soft parts, but I haven't noticed any type of warping or any type of distortion with the brace. So I really like that. I also like, again, the adjustable uh, Picatinny slots here where you could either raise it up or bring it back down. So one other pro that I like is the magazines. So these are PSA uh, mags. They make them th themselves. This is their smoky version, but they do have a flat dark earth. They have a solid black. They have a banana one. And these are 35 round magazines. I actually really, really like them. Uh, the other cool thing about this, and it's definitely a pro, is that this also accepts CZ Scorpion mags. And CZ Scorpion mags are really nice. And it's good just to have that option. Uh, their mags in particular go for super cheap. Um, I think they go for about $15, which is awesome um, because I don't like spending a ton of money on magazines. So that's definitely another pro to this gun. All right, so now let's talk about how I have it set up. So most times I do just keep a suppressor on this because um, I like shooting it suppressed. It's super fun. Um, but I, you know, it doesn't come with a suppressor. So that's why I'm just running the muzzle brake today. Uh, moving back, I do have a Surefire Scout, um, so I do have that connected to a M-Lock Picatinny slot here. Uh, I have it on the left side just so it's out of the way for my C-clamp. And then I do have the cloud defensive mount for the pressure pad. Uh, it's a really good mount. I think it's a little bit too expensive. I think the mount was like 60 or 70 bucks, and uh, I don't think it's worth that much. It is a good mount, but I don't think it's worth that much. One thing that I did notice is after a while, if I am shooting with the recoil, you can see that this will pop out pretty easily. It will never come all the way out just the way that I have it in, but it does slide out a little bit. You can see that there is some movement there about a quarter inch or so. So just be aware of that. Um, I don't know if there's a really, really a way to fix that. Um, but I have noticed that while shooting that this will slide out a little bit. But other than that, I, you know, I think that mount is really good. Uh, moving back here, I have, um, I'm going to bring up on the screen right now, these M-Lock uh, rail guard covers here and the little hand stop I got from Slateback Black Industries. 
Um, I think it's about 32, 33 bucks. So not too bad, but it comes with, um, I got the, the, um, what is it called? Um, I don't even remember, but it, it comes with the hand stop. And then it also comes with three different M lock, um, rail guards here. So you've got the, um, one longer one. Okay. And then you've got two shorter ones. And so that's really nice. And I like that. So again, that's from Slate Black Industries. Moving back from here, I have an EOTech holographic. Um, this is, I have two EOTechs. I have one on my AUG and then I have one on this. EOTechs are really nice. I have absolutely no complaints. Um, well, I guess the battery life is not great, but other than that, super durable, very reliable. Um, they can get very bright. You can, they're very easy to use under uh, night vision. Uh, and so I'm running that just because it's a nine millimeter. I don't need uh, a high, you know, power optic because again, the most effective range for a nine millimeter is probably, I would say at the absolute most 150 to 200 yards at the absolute most. So all of the shooting that I've done with this gun has been within 50 for the most part. I'd say about 99% of my shooting has been within 50 yards. And so the EOTech is perfect for that. Um, and that's really all I've done to it. I don't, you know, you can't really add too much just because of the rail space, but I don't really need too much. I've got my light, I've got my EOTech and I'm good to go. The trigger's perfect and everything like that. Um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. That's the end of this review. Please leave a comment down below. Again, if you have any questions or if I said anything wrong, please correct me. Again, I'm a civilian. Uh, I'm not some military, you know, special ops guy that knows everything about everything. Um, so I'm willing to be criticized and uh, have that critique uh, about me. Um, share this video if you found it helpful. Please subscribe. Again, I'm going to say this, uh, try to say this at the end of every video. Once we hit 100 subscribers, I am going to give away an Arcteryx Naga Hoodie Gen 2 in Ranger Green. It's a men's large. Check out the video. I don't want to go into too much, but there will be a giveaway once we hit 100 subscribers. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.